Hi, I'm Nick Schott at Guillemot Kayaks. Welcome to episode 15 of my series of building the Petrol Play Kayak. In the last episode, I installed hatches, deck line fittings, and made in pours. In this episode, I'll finish up the hatches, varnish the interior, and join the hull and deck together. The hatch will have a gasket to provide a seal. That gasket needs a smooth surface to seal against. Since the thin interior fill coats leave the texture of the fabric showing, I need to apply another fill coat around the perimeter of the hatch. I mask the middle of the hatch and then paint on epoxy with a little colloidal silica added to thicken it slightly. While I'm at it, I'm sealing the end grain around the hatch edge. A little blast from the heat gun pops bubbles and levels out the surface. When the epoxy is tacked up a bit, I peel off the masking tape. I need to scuff up the interior to help the varnish stick. Since I want to keep the weave texture of the glass fabric, I can't just sand everything flat. I cut a circle of synthetic steel wool and use that on my small random orbital sander. The wooliness of the material does a good job of deglossing the epoxy surface without sanding out the texture. Both the deck and hull get the same treatment. I don't want to get varnish along the shear lines because I'm going to have to epoxy and fiberglass tape along the deck hull seam, so I mask off the top edge. The whole inner surface below the tape will be coated in varnish. While the interior may not see much ultraviolet light, the varnish is still good protection for the epoxy. Since the ends of the kayaks will be almost completely inaccessible when completed, now is the time to prevent problems later. I use the same brushing pattern for varnish as I did for the heavy epoxy fill coat discussed in episode 10. First I apply the varnish in heavy horizontal strokes, then level it out with lighter vertical strokes, followed by very light horizontal strokes to tip off bubbles. At the chine, it can be helpful to break up the vertical strokes into two sections, above and below the chine.
Irregular shapes such as the deck fittings or drip producers. I carefully work my way around the bump using my brush to sponge up excess varnish at the end. When the first coat's dried for about 10 hours, I apply another coat right over the top. After those two coats have dried overnight, I degloss again. The tack cloth cleans out any accumulated dust. The third coat of satin varnish provides a final finish for the interior of the kayak. I left the same tape on for all three coats. The top edge of the shear still has a bit of a rough edge left over from the interior glassing, plus some puddles of epoxy here and there. I need to make the shear fair and smooth to ensure a tight fit between the deck and hull. I use a block plane, rasp, or a sanding block to clean up the edge. I don't want to round it over, but instead make a pair of nearly matching bevels on the hull and deck. This will require some test fits. Here I see the end pores need to be shaved down a little. With the ends fit well, I want to check the fit along the length. I temporarily tape the seam together looking for tight spots. I mark these with some blue masking tape so I can find them when I take the deck off again. Satisfied with the fit, I clean out the interior, then lay in some painter's masking film. This has tape along one edge and a lot of static cling to hold it in place. This will keep me from getting too much epoxy on my fresh varnish. A strip of green tape above the masking film defines the edge of the fiberglass seam tape. I'll be able to peel this up after laying the seam tape on one side without peeling off the masking film before seaming the other side. Natured alcohol cleans off any dust or contaminants where I'll be epoxying down the interior seam tape. I mix up some epoxy thickened with wood flour to apply to the tops of the end pores. This will secure the deck down at the ends. Now I start clamping the deck to the hull with glass reinforced packing tape. The thing that's going to hold the shear line seam in alignment is friction. This is created by forcing the deck down onto the hull with the tension of the packing tape. What I'm saying is, in order for this to work, the tape must be very tight. I use a tape dispenser that lets me really pull hard on the tape, stick it down to the hull while I'm pulling on it, and then easily cut the packing tape after it's in place. If I can't reach inside the bow to push the seam into alignment, I can use a putty knife to lever the seam into position while I tape it tightly together. The hull and deck are really quite flexible, so even if they don't align perfectly initially, you can usually bend them to line up. While the tape might have trouble holding initially, with enough tension and friction between the shears, I've successfully joined together badly mismatched pieces.
depending on how easily the seam comes together, I usually end up with tape every four to six inches or 10 to 15 centimeters. While applying epoxy to the inside seam, there's bound to be some that leaks out. The strip of masking tape along the seam will contain it, but to avoid large bumps, I want to apply the tape wrinkle-free and smooth. I find it helps to apply it to the hull and then fold it up onto the deck after. We want gravity helping the task of taping the inside seam, so I secure the kayak up on edge. A little tape assures it doesn't do something unexpected. The inside seam will be reinforced with 3 inch wide pre-woven fiberglass tape. I measure a length from about 6 inches shy of the stern to about 6 inches short of the bow. A piece of masking tape placed to align with the center of the cheek plate in the cockpit gets marked with an arrow pointing to the bow to help get the glass back in the correct spot. I roll or fold up the strip of tape to transfer it from the boat to the table covered with a piece of waxed paper. The strip of cloth now gets completely saturated with epoxy. The cloth is actually a 9 ounce fabric that takes a while to soak up the resin, so I brush it on heavy and give it time to soak in. While the cloth is absorbing the epoxy, I brush more resin onto the seam. I reach as far as I can with my arms and then use a brush screwed to the end of a stick to spread the resin into the ends. I roll up the saturated tape to transfer it back to the kayak. I roll from each end toward the middle where I mark the masking tape with the cheek plate location. Bringing the roll over to the boat, I align the tape behind the center of the cheek plate, making sure my arrow is pointing towards the bow. I can now roll out the tape along the seam as far as my arms will reach in each direction. When I get beyond my arm's reach, I again switch over to the brush on a stick. I just want to unroll the tape down the seam between the green masking tape. This takes some patience. You can steer the roll one direction or the other by pushing it with the brush. Mistakes happen. Depending on your personality, you may find that cussing helps. Others may try to manipulate the tape with a brush in a fruitless effort to try and make the situation right. The solution that works is to just pull a cloth back, re-roll it, and install it again. The epoxy is setting up while you fuss around. The quicker you get on with the show, the better off you'll be. This time I checked there were no snags before pulling back the stick. 
With the tape properly down in the bow, I now want to smooth it out and make sure it's well stuck down by brushing it with a bit more epoxy resin. Now to do the other end. Hopefully it'll go a little bit more smoothly this time. I let the first side set up sufficiently that it won't fall off when I flip the kayak over to do the other side. Here I'm marking the center of the cheek plate and reference arrows to guide the strip of tape back to the right spot after it's been wet out. Marks on the tape will be hidden behind the cheek plate and won't be visible in the finished kayak. I had a few issues again in the bow, but with patience and persistence it worked out fine. We just about have something that looks like a kayak. In the next episode I'll make the outer stems, apply a layer of fiberglass over the hull, and reinforce the outer seam. Be sure to post any questions you may have to the comments area. Until the next episode, happy paddling and thanks for watching.